I thought we could read a, a book called One Rainy Day. It is written by Christina Butler and illustrated by Tina McIntyre. All right, let's get started. One Rainy Day. Pitter Pat, Pitter, Pitter Patter, Pitter Pat. Little Hedgehog woke up to the sound of raindrops. Hooray, he cried happily. It's raining. At last, I can wear my new raincoat, raincoat hat and boots and try out my new umbrella. Little Hedgehog wiggled into his shiny new boots as quickly as he could. He ran outside and opened his umbrella with a pop. Pitter patter, pitter pat. The raindrops bounced all around him. This is great, said Little Hedgehog, laughing, spinning the umbrella around and around and splashing in the deepest puddles he could find. Is the room under that umbrella for me? Came Mole's small voice from nearby. I'm getting very wet out here. Oh my goodness, you are wet, Mole. Here. Take my umbrella, said Little Hedgehog. What are you doing out here in the rain? My house is full of water, replied Mole sadly. I'm looking for somewhere to dig a new home. I'll come and help you, Little Hedgehog offered. Thank you, said Little Mole. Mole snuggled under the umbrella and danced down the path in front of Little Hedgehog. Then... All of a sudden at once, a gust of wind turned the umbrella inside out. Little Hedgehog raced after Little Mole as he was swept off the ground. Help, cried Little Mole. Help, Little Hedgehog. I've got you, yelled Little Hedgehog, holding onto Mole's feet. Little Hedgehog pulled with all his might. They wibbled and then they wobbled. And then they both fell over with a bump. Are you all right? Mole asked, little hedgehog, picking himself up. Mole nodded. But it is too windy today. We, can we look for my new home tomorrow? Good idea, so replied little hedgehog. We'll go back to my house and try again in the morning. But just when they thought the wind had passed, a huge gust tossed them like autumn leaves into the air. The umbrella fell into the river with a splash. The little hedgehog dropped safely into the umbrella, but Mole fell straight into the water. Help, he gasped and sputtered. Give me your paw, Mole, shouted little hedgehog. Mole scrambled into the umbrella as it bobbed on its way down the river. Thank you, little hedgehog, he whispered, shivering, but then he sat up. I hear someone shouting. It was Fox waving from the bank. There he is. Over there, he yelled. Yelled. Over there, yelled Fox, pointing. Mouse and her family are trapped. The water is flooding the meadow. Can you rescue them? Come on, Mole, said Little Hedgehog. Let's go. And he pulled two sticks from the river and with Mole's help, paddled the umbrella boat across the meadow. The water was getting higher and higher. We're coming, called Little Hedgehog as the frightened mice swung back and forth on the grass. Then, one by one, he and Mole lifted Mother Mouse and her babies gently into the umbrella. Twisting and turning as the swirling waters, Little Hedgehog and Mole paddled hard towards the safety of the bank. Safe and sound, said Fox, helping them out. Let's go to Badger's house to dry off. When they arrived, they found Badger very grumpy. You'd think there was plenty of room outside for the rain without it coming through my roof. He snapped, watching the water drip, drip, drip from his floor, or to his floor. 
But Little Hedgehog had a wonderful idea. He opened his umbrella and pushed it through the roof so the umbrella caught all the drips. Splendid, cried Badger. Three cheers for Little Hedgehog. Now, let's have some cocoa. So, warm and dry, the friends curled up by the fire and told Badger all about their rainy day. Now, on a rainy day, if you have a leak in your roof, I would not recommend putting that umbrella through the roof. Maybe put a bucket down instead, but our roofs aren't made of dirt and, and soil like they are for uh, Badger and Little Hedgehog. And yeah, don't, don't do that. <laughs> but it's a cute story. I thought it was appropriate since it's the last week of April. April showers bring those beautiful May flowers. So as the rain keeps coming along, we'll hopefully see more and more beautiful flowers. I do love seeing all the tulips that have been out. I can't wait to see more flowers spreading for the springtime. All right, so we're gonna paint a picture from the story or inspired by the story. So if you'd like to join me on that, go ahead and get all your uh, all your materials. So if you're if you're gonna paint, grab those brushes, grab your paint, grab your tray, grab paper, water, maybe a smock or something and make sure you don't get the paint all over yourself. If you don't have paint, that's fine too, don't worry. You can always follow along with crowns, markers, or color pencils, whatever you have at home works, and I'll see you in just a few minutes. Okay, thanks. All right, everybody, so we've got our story, One Rainy Day. Hopefully our rainy days will slow down. They have a little bit already. Um, so I thought we could recreate uh, a scene from the book where the umbrella is floating down the river. I thought that was really cute. So this is what I've already kind of come up with and we're gonna do this together, okay? All right, let's get started. So you're gonna wanna take a large brush and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take some um, blue, some green and some white. So get that brush wet, make sure it's clean I want to take some blue, some green, and some white, and we're just going to lay it. We're going to actually um, dot it all over the paper in different spots. Get pretty, get pretty good sizes. Or you can also take the bottle um, of, of paint and just kind of like squeeze little dots around. That way you get them kind of all over the place, just little dots if you're gonna do the paint itself. So this way what we're gonna do is when we put this on the paper, we're gonna put it on here and then we're gonna just brush over and completely blend it all together so it's gonna make a pretty unique color. You don't need a lot of green. You'll probably want more blue than green and you'll want more white than green as well. And you don't really want to put a lot at the top because what we're going to do is that's going to be the bushes up there. Okay, so now we're going to blend all our, oh, don't forget with some, just a little bit of white because what we're going to do is we're also going to add some white to the top to kind of make the, the bubbles of the water as well. So just put a little bit of white on there, kind of space it out. Okay, so now we're just gonna start blending it all together. So you're going to get, when you do it like that, that's one of my favorite ways of just blending colors together, just popping down different colors you know you want to use, then you get this really um, different textiled and unique color for your painting. So water is kind of like, it is blue, but it's also kind of like gray and green. And then sometimes you'll see like the foamy of the bubbles with white. So we're going to add just like little dabs of white, 
we're just gonna wet a brush so we can blend those colors together and just kind of like place it throughout and just kind of like do an, a flick upward motion and spread that out just kind of at different points in the painting so you bring a little bit more of that white and that white stands out a little bit more so don't forget to so you actually kind of want your brush a little wet for this one and then just blend it blend that white a little bit better on top and that way you get more of that sea foamy kind of color just kind of do that throughout the whole painting okay so I think that looks really good uh, so next what we're gonna do we're gonna work on is um, at the top we're gonna have those little, like the bank of the river at the top. That's why it doesn't matter about the top because the top we're gonna to cover with green. Um, I'm gonna show you that scene from the story that I'm. So kind of like, we're gonna do something really similar to this again and see how it's got like the textiles of the, the green and the white. And then we're gonna, this is gonna be the top. We're just gonna kind of do a grassy river at the top or a grassy river bank there at the top there. So for those, you're gonna want the colors, you're gonna want the green and the white and the yellow. What we're going to do is we're going to take a slightly smaller brush because it's not as large of an area and we're going to dip it in the green and then what you're going to do is you're just going to find where you want that bank to start on your painting so i'm going to probably start it right about there and then i'm going to flick my brush upward into the side and give it that grassy look. You can also add in a tad of yellow on your brush, the green and the yellow, to give it some of that different color and texture. You can make the grass go any way you want, but you wanna go on the edge of your brush and you just wanna kinda of flick up. So we're gonna do that on one side and then we're gonna kinda of leave a little space open and do it on the other. And you're gonna to wanna to keep doing it all the way to the very back. So keep going on that. Get your grass on there as many places as you want. I'm also gonna add the grass probably a little bit here so that it looks like the water's kinda of coming through um, in different spots. And then maybe a little bit there. So you keep working on your grass and I'll keep doing mine and then I'll meet you when uh, we finish that. So we're back, did the Baffert of our river, our grassy area of the bank of the river. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna put on our, um, our umbrella boat now. So 
we're just gonna, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and actually draw this on there first so I can gauge and how big I want my umbrella to be in the space. And then what we'll do is we'll trace over it. So just make a half circle on where you want your umbrella and we'll go from there. And you can either do this with a pencil or um, I highly recommend using uh, just regular chalk because then that way it's easier to just rub off or um, and to cover up with the paint. I don't have any chalk, I can't seem to find any, but a pencil works too. Lightly draw it on there with the pencil. Okay, so it's on there. I'm not sure how well you can see it. I'm actually going to make my umbrella pretty big this time compared to the first one I did. I wanted to actually take up more of the space of the painting itself. So what I'm going to do is just follow that line that I made with a um, pretty decent sized brush and just outline that half circle first. Okay, so you can make your umbrella whatever color you want it to be. You can make it red, you can make it yellow, blue, black, um, green, if you feel like. Again, like when we did the truffle lump trees, now that I, before I continue, um, we might want to actually put down a layer of white first uh, because of that blue back, because of that dark blue background, and then we can add in more of that red. So we'll fill in the rest of this with white, and then we'll go over it again in red. And then if you want to go ahead and start doing it, you can just add in the tops the top or the bottom of the umbrella. Um, you can just make a little curve or you can make it flat. However you want to make your bottom of your umbrella is up to you. So I'm just going to kind of do um, a few little bumpy curves. as part of the bottom of my umbrella, but you can make them points or you can make them rectangles, like a straight line, however you want. So go ahead and just fill the rest of that in with white. Okay, so now that's on there, we're gonna go ahead and um, I'm just going to go ahead and put that red on there. So this will actually just lighten up the umbrella so it may look a little more pink. Um, but again, you can always just add on more layers as it dries to get more of that color if you wanted it to be a darker color. Or you can wait for the paint to dry a little bit more and then add that second layer. Okay, so this umbrella is a polka dotted umbrella. So we're now we actually are gonna wait for the paint to dry and add in those polka dots. But while we do that, while we wait for it to give it just a little dry, we're gonna go ahead and add the handle to the umbrella. It's sticking up, so let me go ahead and add this real quick. It's not as red as I want it right there. And we'll go ahead and add that handle to the bread, to the, to the umbrella itself. So if you have brown paint or you don't have brown paint, it's super easy to mix. Red, yellow, and blue. If you want a more 
lighter color, you'll want to add more yellow and red than blue. Uh, but make sure you add all three colors in there. So it's very simple. You're going to just figure out which way you want the handle to go. It doesn't really matter. It's your umbrella. So I'm just going to put my handle there in the center. And then I'm going to bring it and I'm going to make a curved part right there. So just a line up and then you can either curve it from that line or curve it away from the line and bring that line together like I just did. And you might need to go over it maybe um, one or two times just to give it um, a little more of that color in there. Okay, so we're going to let that dry, and then we'll come back and we'll add our polka dots. All right, guys, now that our umbrella is dry, we're going to go ahead and add the polka dots. Um, you, don't, you can make your umbrella however you want. I just thought I'd make it look kind of like the book, and then we're going to add in the book the umbrella itself had a shimmer to it, so at the very end we're going to add some um, glitter paint. If you have that at home, great. If you have just regular glitter, cool. If your parents don't want you to mess around with glitter because it's glitter, I get it. Um, it also works as well, don't worry. <laughs> so just kind of pick some spots on the um, umbrella and just color in those circles. I put a lot of polka dots on mine, um, but while the paint is still wet, I have some glitter paint here, so I'm just going to go ahead and dip my brush in that. And it's silver and pretty light. I'm just going to go ahead and just stick it right on top so you can, you can see right on top of it, the white. So I went ahead and just added the glitter onto my polka dots, but you can add it over the whole thing. If you really want to add a lot of glitter to just your umbrella, you can um, go over it again one more time to, um, get, the, to get that wet paint. And then, um, like if you actually have like traditional glitter glitter and just sprinkle it and then um, shift it on the paper and then dump it over a trash can just so you have that um, glitter kind of contained in one spot. And, um, and that way you give it kind of a more fun, shimmery look, like it kind of has a little bit in the book. So there it is right there. If I, well, you can see that glittery shimmeriness. I put those, I put that polka dot paint on kind of, kind of thick. So it's going to be a minute before it dries. But I want to thank you for coming to join me today with one rainy day and our beautiful painting today of our of our um, umbrella stuck in the water um, and uh, 
I'll see you next week. Next week we'll do something for Mother's Day. I'm trying to figure out the best way about going to do this particular project. So as soon as I get that ready to go, I'll get that video together and upload it for you. So hopefully if you need a Mother's Day idea, I can help you with that. Remember, stay home, stay safe, wash your hands. We love you and we can't wait to see you again.